this letter. I don't get this. He told me, because my, in my world, your word means something, right? When you give your word, don't give your word if it doesn't mean nothing. He gave his word. And I saw him at a car wash, finally, about three months after he was released. And he's higher than a kite. And he's in the car wash, and my, I have to be right behind him getting my car washed. So I walk up to him, I go, hey, what happened, bro? Where have you been? Man, I'm, I'm getting there, man, I'm getting there. I, was like, I had to show him the love, you know, because if I, if I judge him harsh, if I tell him, man, get your act together, he's not going to hear me no more. So I'm showing him, I'm like, man, I really miss you, bro. I, w I wish you would come, man. I, I'm, I'm going to make it, I'm going to make it. He didn't come. Two months later, he killed somebody. Two months later, he shot a rival gang member. And he has 65 years as I speak right now. He has 65 years. And you should see his mug shot on the, on the internet. He looks like a depressed, angry kid. Because he had a chance. But he didn't follow through with it. And he had people there trying to say, man, give this up already. I know that's an extreme example. But these things can get out of hand if we don't take care of them now. Let, let, let yourself die to some things here in this camp. Leave it buried here. Leave some things buried here. And I, I want to um, pass that one empty container around. If you could just throw in your, um, your little piece of paper in there. And, uh, you know, could you just pass that, that around? And, uh, you know... We are not going to be able, I'm about ready to close soon here, but if you could just stay with me just a couple more minutes. We are not going to be able to carry Jesus Christ to this lost and dying world if we don't make room for him. If we don't make room for Jesus in our own lives, we're not going to be able to carry him out. We're vessels. We're supposed to carry Jesus to the lost and dying world. People are dying and perishing and going to hell. Right? I mean, that's what our Bible says, either we believe it or not. And if we can't make room for Jesus, we're not going to make no difference in this world. We need to die to some things to make room for our Savior. And it's going to be painful. It's going to hurt to let go of some things that we've become accustomed to, that we've grown a habit to, that we've made peace with. This bottle is my friend. I'm going to be drinking the rest of my life. This is my buddy here. No, it isn't. It's your enemy. You think it's your friend now. It's going to, you know, whatever your lifestyle is, I'm fine the way I am. People keep telling me what I'm doing is a sin. I'm fine. I don't feel bad about it. You will someday. It, it, sin has pleasure for a season, right? That's what the book of Hebrews says. If it, if it wasn't pleasurable, nobody would do it. It makes you think like, yeah, this is good. I'm happy. I finally know who I am now. No. And, and um, a guy named David Berkowitz, you know, he, he, he was a mass, mass murderer. He, he killed seven people in, uh, in uh, New York City in the early 70s. Son of Sam. He killed seven people. He walked up to parked cars and lovers' lanes where people were just talking, kissing, or whatever. He just went, bang, bang, bang. Shot him and walked, ran away. He got away for about a year. Uh, finally, uh, 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 he, would, he had an expired uh, meter. He didn't put a quarter in the meter. And somebody ran his tag and found out, and they found out who it was because he didn't pay his meter. And then all of a sudden, all the garbage started coming out. He was hearing voices, and a dog was talking to him, and he was involved in the occult, and he had a demonic uh, oppression in his life, and he was involved in, in all these evil practices. And he felt like he needed to do what he did. He gets sentenced to life in prison, and he's in a prison in upstate New York, which is maximum security Attica. And while he's there, somebody wants to kill him because... This guy's a fool, and plus I can make a name for myself if I kill the son of Sam in prison. Everybody's going to know who I am. I did society a favor, right? So he gets his neck slashed. He has this huge gashing scar across his neck. He barely survived. Just missed his juggler by it. Like a millimeter or something. He goes through depression. He's suicide. He tries to hang himself twice. He hates himself. 
He, he, but he won't, return, he won't receive the gospel. People are like, I need Jesus. They are Jewish. I'm Jewish, he kept saying. Because he was raised in a Jewish house, but they weren't practicing Jews. So anyways, to make a long story short, he's on the yard in a December evening after 11 years of maximum security prison. He's the walking dead. He just feels like a loser. Everybody hates him. He doesn't even know why he did what he did. He's walking the yard and this guy, a Puerto Rican guy from the Bronx, New York, Ricky Lopez. <laughs> Ricky Lopez walks up to him and he says, hey man, uh, Jesus Christ loves you and he's got a plan for your life. And he goes, you don't know who I am. If you knew who I am, you wouldn't say that. He goes, no, I know who you are and Jesus Christ loves you. And, and he's like, what? The next night, Ricky's there again. The next night, Ricky's there again. He's walking the yard with him, just hanging out, talking to him and talking to him and talking to him. And he says, hey, David, I know you don't read the New Testament, but read the Old Testament. Just read some Psalms. Can you do that? So one night, David's reading the Psalms, and it says, the poor man cried out to the Lord, and the Lord heard him. And he felt like, man, I'm, I'm poor in spirit. I'm hurting. He got down in, on his knees in that prison. And he gave his life to Christ. And he is a modern day miracle. The man that killed all these people is now serving Jesus Christ faithfully for the last 20 years. And he is an awesome testimony of God's grace. That we cannot earn this. No matter what you've done in your life, God loves you. And he just wants you to repent of your sin and come to him. And I say that because Ricky Lopez was full of Jesus. He was carrying Jesus in Attica prison. He may have not even had a GED, but he was willing, he was willing to love David Berkowitz. He was willing to spend some time with him. He carried the vessel. He was a vessel fit for the master's use. Does somebody want to be a vessel fit for the master's use? To see people converted and come to Christ and spend eternity with them in heaven. That's what happened in the life of David Berkowitz. He is a thankful man now. And they were talking about evangelism. Just let me read two little pieces here. The guy says, he reckons that one of the reasons for our failure as a church in evangelism is that our lives do not embody him who we claim to represent. In our lives, we do not embody him who we claim to represent. His statement brought to mind another by a Hindu professor who once found out that a man in his class was a Christian. He found out that this man in his class was a Christian. He said, if you Christians were like Jesus Christ, the professor told him, India would be at your feet tomorrow. If you Christians were really like Jesus Christ, India, which is all Hindu, 80, 80 or 90 percent Hindu, would be at the feet of Jesus tomorrow if people really acted like Christ. If people really could carry Him in them. 